Hello, loves. I'm going to have another opportunity to share with you my experience, knowledge, and wisdom during our session process. Yes, I have landed in Houston, and I am super tired. I'm completely grateful to Source for allowing me to go through those portals. I was up in the sky for 14 hours, and I'm just like, my body can feel it. The gravity definitely took a toll on, um, you know, the higher you are, the gravity, and definitely, you know, we get the idea. Oh, my gosh. I'm like... What is it called? Delirious? <coughs> Delirious in the fact that, like, I'm, like, still sleepy, but then I'm awake at the same time. But regardless, I want to talk to you guys. I was like, I have to upload because I want to upload. During the trip, I did a lot of things, and, of course, so I then watched a movie called Dr. Sleep. I'm a fan of Stanley Kubrick. I'm a fan of Stephen King since I was young, and so Dr. Sleep was something I, I saw in the, like, you know, in the movie posters in Tokyo and, like, you know, the trailer. And it just seemed, it didn't seem that scary. You know, like, the original one. The original one is, like, true horror. But this one was true horror. They had, they mimicked some of the uh, techniques, the camera techniques that Kubrick, Kubrick used, which was so nostalgic. I was like, yeah, yes. I was living for it. Like, I didn't care that they copied it. I was, like, more like, oh, yes, I'm homage and uh, to uh, Stanley Kubrick. However, that is interesting because I've wanted to watch Dr. S well, I didn't want to watch Dr. Sleep, and I was on the plane, and then I was like, you know what, let me just watch Dr. Sleep. And it is, the concept is amazing. Stephen King is definitely an occultist. He knows information that is beyond spirituality into the occultism, which is different. It's, it's esoteric. Uh, however, it's more of occultism than esoteric, and uh, he had some really, I'm just, I'm so impressed. It had my hands cold. I was like, why are my hands cold? Like, if you watch a scary movie and it, like, triggers you in that way, like, you have cold feet or cold hands, that's because there's a stagnation of energy somewhere that's not being released. And so it's a great sign to know that that's something that you can focus on as a way of uh, the healing process because you still have a reaction to that as a fear. Oh, and to what is going on. So, oh, I took notes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let me just, let me grab the notes. Uh I'm at the hotel now laying down. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Let me make this video. Upload it. If you love the goods, you know, you know. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, here we go. All right. Ooh. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I'll edit it out or something. Maybe not because I was talking. Okay, so Dr. Sleep is a sequel to The Shining, if you guys not know. Uh, they're both they're both films, and they're both books written by Stephen King, and then they were adapted to film. They're both horror films. I don't know if you're a horror lover, but, you know, going into the horror realm, definitely, uh, it's a great, like, trigger. It's a great awakening of your ego. Like, it's like your ego death. Like, if whatever scares you, it's definitely a great sign to watch it. You can need to watch it so you can get desensitized to it and learn from it. So, yes. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So why is this film spiritual? Because I didn't expect it to be spiritual. Not all horror films like Annabelle or, you know, uh, Get Out. Get Out is a really good one, actually. Uh, I mean, just the horror movies in general. They're not all that, like, you know, the Freddy Krueger films, Chucky. They don't have, like, a spirituality behind them. But this one, honey, had spirituality behind it. Because The Shining can, tra can, can be translated into a psychic ability. Uh, essentially activating all your psychic abilities while on the body, right? That's essentially what it is. The Shining, which is, you know, how it's introduced, uh, it continues on to Dr. Sleep. The Shining is a way to commute telepathy, clairvoyance. They see color. They see, uh, you know, they hear sound. They can astral project. They can astral travel. They can do remote viewing. It's like literally um, they can have access to all those psychic abilities. That is what Shining is. And a lot of people... Everyone has it, and generally speaking, not in terms of the movie, but or film or book, but everyone has it. It's just not everyone wants to unlock those potentials in them. Uh, in this book, The Shining and Doctor Sleep, they both talk about or unlock their psychic abilities. The people or uh, Danny, I think his name is Danny. He's the first one that we see with the shining ability, and then we got introduced to the uh, butler, and then that's how it goes. So. That's one way. If you want to know about clairvoyance or any psychic abilities, definitely watch Dr. Sleep. It definitely has more of an emphasis on the psychic abilities, meaning that, you know, there's a lot of uh, astral projection, there's remote viewing, there's meditation, which is so weird. There's altered state of consciousness. Honey, an occultist, you might add, I'm like, Stephen King, where do you get all this? <laughs> it's like me talking about, oh, I just went through some portals. No big deal. They're like, dude, what's wrong with you? You were in the sky 
what do you mean by portals? But you gotta understand, like, I was like in the plane meditating, I was like, okay, I'm about to jump another timeline, another portal, I'm in the sky going from one place to another, I'm about to choose a reality I want and focus on it, and so I did a little meditation there, just a just TMI, you know, just for your information. Uh, so these powers are linked with fear. Uh, that's one of the interesting uh, concepts that I was not aware of in regards to being the shining or like having the shining, having that capability. It has to do with uh, fear. It's like linked to fear. It's like being able to see the astral, lower astral plane. It's it's coming to terms with one's own fear monsters or like uh, what, one's, what one is scared of. Uh, in a way to, um, what is it, digest, or a way to assimilate the information. So fear is the, ooh, fear is the, un, oh, I can't even read my handwriting right now, is the underlying concept of this film, something in the spiritual community called Lushing. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. So I think the main, like, concept, like, the underlying foundation is a concept I don't know if you're familiar with. It's a bit esoteric and occult. And it talks about Lushing. Now, I don't want you loves to get fearful of what I'm about to talk about because it is esoteric. It is at a higher dimension. And this is what is uh, occurring or what I've read and so forth through like the occultism information, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just look it up for yourself to just know that, you know, it exists and I'm just not making something up. Um, but it's called Lushing. And Lushing is a technique that lower entities, lower vibrating entities use to conjure up fear as a way to extract energy. And a lot of people say that, you know, the reptilians here do that. Like we are constantly in fear, so that's how they acquire the energy to, to, to take the fear from human beings and that's how they feed off of them. I don't know if you know what that means, but it's called Lushing. Now, this is just theory, but I think Lady Gaga does Lushing. I saw, because I don't know how this concept came about, but I saw the fact that she was playing at Coachella. Uh, this is you know, when she was playing Coachella or whatever, I had to see her concert because she always has visuals or whatever in the pre, like, as the pre-show, she has visuals. And so the visuals were shocking. Like, they shocked the audience. So, like, it brings the type of fear because they don't know what's coming up. And it's, like, a fear, like, whoosh. Like, go check it out. The Coachella Coachella uh, performance by Lady, Lady Gigi or Lady Gaga. Check that out and see how it works because I think that's what she does because you could even hear some people like, ew, oh, no, like... In that state of like unwanting and fearful and just being um, in this releasing this fear energy, and then she comes out and then she just sucks it all up in her own way. But that's what these that this is what emphasizes that there are good shiners and bad shiners. Meaning there are people who are playing the good game, right, and the ones playing the bad game, and they're playing like in the fourth dimension reality. So that's really cool if you want to learn a little bit more about astral planes. And so the premise of the movie is it's spoilers, spoiler, spoilers. Um, but it's good to know this information before watching it because you're like, oh, wow. Um, it's about a girl who, is, who has a shining and is very powerful. Like, her purity is very powerful. Uh, she's very strong. And so these people go around and extract kids' shining. They go and they extract their shining by fear. They kidnap them, and then they kill them, extract the energy, and then they kill them. And that bit was a bit scary because it's like, oh, my gosh, they're, like, killing, and they're just moving around, and they have these powers, and... It's like, oh my gosh, I mean, it can be real. When you know that the concept of Lushing is like semi like real or something, but not my reality, girl. Uh, so yeah, they consume the fear energy. So uh, let me see. When lower astral beings consume fear energy as a way to maintain power and take sustenance. Be aware of what slaves us is the first step to confronting our subconscious in the lower astral body. Um, because the lower astral, the astral plane, deals with these types of negative entities. And so that's why having foundation here on earth before going or ascending to the fourth dimension or the astral plane um, we'll have a better understanding and grasp of what's going on this is in the ascension process if you don't know what i'm talking about then just wait for the energy management course uh, self-healing certification program and i talk more in depth about the ascension process and what you all need to know give you kind of like the uh, rundown of how it, how it's all about and stuff um but that was the most interesting thing loves the entire concept of the leashing and the fear and how you know, you're there and you're like, oh my gosh, they're so evil people. And it's like, and like whenever they die, okay, so like they, like let's say one gets shot. So one gets shot and so like the bad guy gets shot, right? And so the way that they experience, well, they fear off of fear. Okay, so they're beings of fear. And so um, 
they want power through fear. So whenever they die, they experience all that fear. And you can like, the way he depicted it was so like, for me, it was scary. That was horror. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Like the pain, it was just like, you could, you could see it and then you could just imagine like the pain that they're going through because of everything they did, right? They murdered, they, you know, scared, they got fear energy, et cetera, et cetera. And so they have to experience all that while in the body to release the, all that fear that they've had and then they pass away. Uh, and that was very, it's kind of like it, vampires, but that's in a different realm. But yeah, it was, it shook me and I was in the plane, I was just shook on the plane, I was like, this cannot be real. The book must have like more detail of like the astral plane. Now, one of the cool like deets about these shining ability is that they act as the Akashic workers. And everyone, I realized that, well, Akashic workers in the way that we can access our own memories and our own timelines, our own, et cetera, et cetera. So like each one of the shiners, like the, one of the main, the girl and then the main evil character and Danny, they all have the this, um, car this, this place, what we, I would call the Akashic Records, which is really cool. So the girl had compartmentalized a space in her mind for all the memories, all the experience, right? She just had boxes. The evil one, because she's lived so long, she, uh, they represented her as a cathedral full of gold, and huge, just a massive, like just massive Akashic Records or like a mental plane to, to compartmentalize all the memories and experience from this lifetime and the other, because she's lived through many lifetimes many decades, many, you know, many eras, et cetera, many periods. And so that's how she did it. And now Danny, on the other hand, had, oh, girl, I just, I want you to check it out for sure. That one was surprising. And so, yeah, that was Dr. Sleep in a nutshell, why it's spiritual. And what I learned from it was to not, to understand that becoming aware of what scares us, like fear looshing or, you know, death or dying a painful death is definitely a, place to start um because it is scary in some behalf um uh, so yeah it's very interesting now this is so cool i don't know if you're a stanley kubrick fan out there uh he's an occultist as well he's part of, i mean a lot of people say he's part of the, the alum but who cares our secret society etc etc you get the point so yeah there's a in the shining if you saw the shining there's a what the butler told Danny never to go into room 237 right and then you kind of ask yourself why and I just totally forgot why it's just you know it's in room 237 but then in the second film they explain why not to go like why not to go into room 237 because the visual is so intense that it's ingrained in your mind versus other aspects so it's kind of like it's like a nightmare that it's like stimulated or triggered by the same stimulus, right? So in this case, if you've seen The Shining, it's in spoilers, um, in room 30, 37, there's just a bathtub with the curtain. And so like the old lady just with one hand pulls back. She's, she's like full of mold. She's rotted, dead body in there. And she stands up all naked and stuff. Okay. Now, that image is ingrained in the soul, in the mind, in the astral plane. Uh, it's a way of her continuing to live on and so the movie of dr sleep starts off with danny trying to figure out like he was he's scared to go to the toilet he's scared to go to the restroom because every time he's there or he's like near the the restroom like he sees that image because it's so harsh and scary that it's ingrained in our soul and so it's triggering and so that's what another lesson that we can learn from this is that um things like that that are ingrained in our mind should always be forgiven should always be uh looked at and released now danny somehow i don't know what he was doing but i don't know what they did the thing i want to know is what they did inside because he closed the door so he, he was like he went to the restroom and he was like it's time this girl needs to go somewhere it's time and so he used his shining powers to do something which i think he compartmentalized her in the mind through his own compartmentalization process but he closed the door and then that was it that was it so like i just don't understand like how what happened inside and how he got rid of that memory really it's it's the memory or like he saw he saw the visual of what happened in the past in the in the, uh, in the hotel right so that's what happened in the hotel it was a real experience so he got that energy and then he got that fear Ooh. he got the fear within him so that's how it all started like that fear that originated fear kept him powerless kept him uh he didn't talk for years after the shining 
uh, because of this fear that he had of that woman until he took charge of the situation and did what he had to do. So that's essentially another um, positive take or just a very um, spiritual take on Dr. Sleep. It was so awesome. I recommend you watching it. If it scares you, definitely let me down below. Do you like it? Do you watch horror films? How do you feel about that? Do you know about Lushing? Yeah, this, is, this was a great topic. A really great topic. I'm just waiting for the other one because I saw another one that was like, oh my gosh, it got me good too, sis. But yeah, this was definitely a great spiritual film. So now I, what I'm thinking, I got the idea of watching spiritual films or like, let's say, for example, Avatar and talking about, you know, spirituality concepts through that, like a way to relate it to the real world or relate it to like the film industry, which it's all programs essentially. Uh, let me know if you like that. If you, if you like that idea, I will definitely do that. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, but yeah, I'm about to go to bed. I will see you tomorrow on the rainbow energy, the weekly rainbow energy update. I think number seven. I'm so excited. I will talk about my trip and how all this fear stuff has manifested in my reality. So stay tuned for that. I will feel you later. Bye.